Okay, well, speaking of chips, the Senate just passing the annual defense bill. That includes a provision that would speed up the approval of semiconductor factories here in the U.S. Keep in mind, this is just the Senate side. Uh, Emily Wilkins is in Washington with the details. Hi, Emily. Hey, Morgan. Well, as you point out, this is just the Senate side, but it's still a big win uh, for chip companies looking to build facilities in the U.S. The Senate approved an expedited permitting process last night. Uh, Congress allocated, as you remember, $52 billion last year to make sure that semiconductors were made in America. But that new money came with a catch. Companies would need to undergo an in-depth environmental review process that could delay construction for more than two years. Senator Mark Kelly, whose state of Arizona will be home to a new chip fabrication plant, said the proposal would cut through the red tape to prevent delays in manufacturing while requiring companies to follow clean air and water laws. To avoid the longer permitting process, companies must break ground by next winter or have received a federal loan or have less than 10 percent of the project covered by federal funds. The bill also allows the Commerce Secretary to offer specific companies exemptions. The measure passed as a part of a larger defense policy bill, but it still has hurdles to clear. The House passed their own defense policy bill last week, and now the two sides need to come together and negotiate a single bill. But Morgan Senator Kelly says he's hopeful that the final bill will contain the streamlined review for chip manufacturers. Yeah, defense policy is always a fun one because you have the NDAA, which is actually the policy bill, and then you have to go through the appropriations policy and actually fund that bill. Um, I, I'm and just we've got problems with both of them. Big, big <laughs> fights coming up in D.C. Which was exactly my question for you, which is how how likely is it now uh, that we could potentially see another continuing resolution, so so a temporary funding measure, um, to be able to get all of this hashed out, or even the potential of a government shutdown, which some analysts are, are, are already floating. I mean, I think you have to keep both things on the table at this point. We saw this past week, um, you know that for the appropriations, it's a big package, so they break it on down into 12 little bite-sized pieces. One of those bite-sized pieces the House wanted to get done this year, but they were held up by those group of hardline conservatives who have some issues with the top-line spending numbers. And so that bill wasn't able to go through. So it looks like we are probably going to have to have that sort of patchwork continuing resolution to get us to the end of the year when hopefully something can can be figured out, but I don't think anyone at this point has taken the idea of a government shutdown off the table. We're just going to have to see what Congress does this fall and into the winter. All right. Sounds like you've got a busy couple of months ahead of you. Emily Wilkins, thanks for bringing us the latest.